So regular viewers of this channel will recognize that I'm working on building a multi-deck HO scale model railroad in the basement of my southeast South Dakota home. Recently I've had a chance to move into electrical construction and I wanted to uh, walk you guys through the how and the why I put together this com command station control center for my Digitrax based DCC system on this episode of Black Hills and Eastern Railroad. Black Hills and Eastern Railroad, from the plains of the Sioux Empire to the heart of the hills. So one of the issues that I'm trying to solve with that control panel is a reverse loop that I've got uh, that's created by the Burlington Northern Marshall Subdivision coming north out of Sioux City, Iowa. You've seen Sioux City, Iowa many times on the layout here before. It comes out and goes uh, through the wall here, around the corner, around a couple more corners, and ends up back in this same area here, uh, continuing northward from Sioux City towards Marshall. And you might notice that it ties back into the yard here, and what you may not have noticed is, is that that ends up creating basically what uh, is known as a balloon track or a reverse loop situation that needs to be addressed electrically. So bear that reverse loop situation in mind while I talk about some other things here, uh, including my inspiration for having done this in the first place. Um, I draw, I've said before here on the channel that I draw inspiration from many other model railroaders, including my buddy Jim in uh, the Sioux Falls area who has that end scale layout that Milo and I operate. Um, he's got a uh, super neat area where all of his wires come together in his Digitrax control DCC system, and I wanted the same thing for my layout. I've seen other guys do sim something similar on their layouts, and there are multiple reasons for laying your circuits out like this, but I thought I'd uh, hit the high points of uh, why you do this at all here. Uh, the first thing is, is that it just looks better. It's not a, a rat's nest of wires like I had here before, uh, that's for sure. And uh, it, it also can ease troubleshooting if we need to take a, uh, a, a district down for a period of time. It's easy to unscrew here on the terminal blocks. And um, also it's uh, just for troubleshooting and it's easy to put it back together if you have a need to uh, take something down very temporarily. Also, it, uh, it will provide for built-in documentation. I intend to uh, sharpie in different connections here uh, on, the, uh, on the board here, uh, just for my information later, because uh, I can't remember what I did yesterday, much less two weeks ago, much less two years ago. So consequently, um, I'll find that handy probably later on to have that uh, documented here on the board without having to uh, trace wire or chase wire or anything like that. So obviously the heart and soul of my system is the uh, Digitrax DCS100 uh, command station. Uh, this thing supports the uh, readback. I've had this for practically forever and a day. And this is the uh, actual command station that I started out with that I bought brand new for my original Sioux Junction layout, which I'll probably talk about in, in uh, later episodes here. I have a uh, power supply, a PS uh, 2012E. Uh, this I got from a friend here a couple of months ago. Uh, he's downsizing and uh, I was upsizing, so uh, I got this off of him from for a pretty good deal. Then we have a PTB100. This is a Soundtracks product. Uh, this product serves to uh, uh, give extra juice on the programming track when we're working with sound-enabled locomotives, uh, like most of Soundtracks locomotives. I believe it'll work with um, other brands of sound decoders as well. Then I have a Digitrax PM42 here. This is a uh, power management uh, board uh, which works in conjunction with a command station. And basically what it does is make one command station into four. Uh, we And Digitrax uh, classifies this as uh, sub-districts actually. So we can have four different districts, uh, meaning that we can have a guy say working down at Sioux City uh, run through a switch and the guys that are working up at uh, Deadwood or in Sioux Falls on this layout in another sub-district won't be affected by that uh, short circuit in the other neighboring sub-district. And then we have a breakout board here. This is an Acculite's PM42 breakout board. And what this does, basically, there this is an edge connector along here. Uh, there's just a slot here on the PM42 that uh, that slides into the actually the the uh, breakout board has a slot in it, and the uh, PM42 is basically a male connector along this side. And what that prevents, or what that helps you with, is is that uh, the PM42 comes with a connector, but unfortunately you have to solder to that. And uh, as you can see here, these are screw terminals on the PM42 uh, breakout board, so we get to uh, just screw things in and not have to solder. Uh, it makes it real nice for installation that way.
And then, of course, I have my terminals here, uh, terminal blocks, and I'm just putting power in and taking off. Um, I have the uh, the this this orange wire here that comes in is the uh, programming track wire, uh, programming track wire going out, and then my first uh, subdistrict here is the uh, basically all of the staging area, the areas that you've seen basically on all of the. Um, basically on all the previous episodes here of Black Hills and Eastern Railroad are powered through this wire here. The PM42 can be configured as a reverse loop controller, meaning that if you get a short in that inside of that uh, reverse loop, it will automatically reverse the polarity on that. Uh, that comes in handy when you are uh, got a reverse loop situation like I described here at the top of the episode. And we'll make that uh, that little piece of Marshall subdivision uh, right here, uh, we'll, we'll make that subdistrict number two. Subdistrict number three will be the uh, Sioux Falls Corson subdivision, um, the Corson subdivision of the Burlington Northern Railroad. And then, of course, uh, subdistrict number four will be the uh, basically the Deadwood line, the high line to Deadwood from Edgemont. Um, so obviously we don't have any construction done on that. I do have wire run here for uh, the reverse loop, uh, or the Marshall subdivision. Uh, nothing's plugged into that yet because no tracks laid or anything like that, but we've got infrastructure to, to support that once that comes up. And then, of course, terminal blocks here will support also the, uh, the subdistricts that are wired in as we get those done here as construction progresses here on the Black Hills and Eastern Railroad. Then these cable fasteners here came from Home Depot. Uh, they've got a section back in their electrical department where they've got a bunch of uh, ties and things like that. And these came in very handy to secure wire onto this board and keep it all neat and clean um, so that it can be easily understood and, uh, and can uh, remain neat and clean through the duration of the use of this layout. I should mention that these... Uh, these connectors here are automotive style connectors. I believe you can pick these up at places like uh, your Napa and CarQuest and uh, Western Auto and places like that that, uh, that carry uh, uh, automotive type electrical equipment. Finally, one thing that I know somebody is going to ask about is set offs uh, from the per printed circuit boards from the uh, plywood here. And I did that with screws and little pieces of tube styrene uh, to keep the, uh, the circuits from directly contacting the uh, plywood behind. Uh, wood doesn't conduct electricity, but it seems like bad form uh, to put uh, printed circuit boards directly on wood like this. So I secured the uh, breakout board with screws, and I'm waiting to get screws that are small enough to fit through the PM42 here uh, to back up with these uh, little pieces of tube styrene. So one final thing on this PTB100, I did a special episode on this, and I'll link to the description below uh, for that, but uh, just wanted to note that why all these wires coming in and out of this thing. Uh, I mentioned the uh, orange wires are out to the programming track. The yellow wires are in from the programming leads on the Digitrax command station, and the black wires are for power to power this device. And then in the other room here, we have the programming track itself, which of course is connected via that wire that I showed you earlier. And we have the PR3, Digitrax PR3, that enables us to talk from the computer via a USB cable, and uh, it talks to the Digitrax system via the local net cable. Uh, everything's good that way, and uh, um, that's how we do programming here in the shop area of the Black Hills and Eastern Railroad World Headquarters. Thanks for taking along on this one. Here's where we're going to pull the pin on this particular episode. We hope you enjoyed the content here. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe for more, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.